Hello, this is Dr. Mikola Rashik of Neurogenomics, bringing you another quick update on some of the science in relation to mRNA vaccines. There's some really neat information I want to share with you today because um, I came across some of the data that is really fascinating because it compares the impact of the Delta variant on vaccinated versus unvaccinated. And the reason why this is really cool is because Delta variant basically took over the entire world. It's actually unbelievable. 97% of all of the variants right now found anywhere in the world are the Delta strain. So, uh, and this happened really rapidly. This strain started taking over the world only this summer. So uh, it's the king of the, all variants. And uh, I showed that I believe in a video, uh, episode uh, 14. So you can actually see it visually how, how the strain just like takes over the world. And um, as a consequence, most of the data we have that allows us to actually study the uh, differences between vaccinated versus unvaccinated are with other strains that might not even be around, and they're not. And uh, scientists have to scramble right now to collect the data in relation to the Delta variant. So this is cool to see some of this data come out so rapidly in, in, in the published literature. So I wanted to tell you two pieces of information. One came from Lancet paper, and another one is uh, some of the latest data from CDC, which is really cool. This is American CDC, so a very authoritative body. So first, let's talk about uh, the Lancet paper. So what they did is, this is a UK study. They traced the family members of, uh, who were exposed to a virus by another family member and they were studying to see what happens in, in such a situation uh, how are the different family members infected and the take-home message there was that for any family members who were vaccinated if they were exposed by another family member in that household to the virus about 25 percent of them got infected Whereas unvaccinated, for the, with their, the ones you got exposed to a virus brought to you by another family member in your household, approximately 38% of them got infected. So you can clearly see there is a distinction there and vaccines afford you so much better protection from being infected. So good news there. However, this is also really interesting. They also showed that once you got infected, whether you're vaccinated or unvaccinated, it didn't matter in terms of how much virus you produced. You produce the same amount of virus. So the vaccine does not protect you in terms of what happens to you after you get infected. And as a consequence, because these people are able to produce the same amount of virus in theory, then you can infect and spread the infection in the same way. So once you get infected, whether you're vaccinated or unvaccinated, it doesn't matter you will produce the same amount of virus apparently and then you can spread it to others in the same fashion and this is not the first time i see this i see i saw this uh, data being published before i never presented it before but uh, now this is the second such information that i see but what is neat and new in this paper is the fact that they showed that vaccinated people once they got infected yes they produce the same amount of uh, virus in, in their samples as unvaccinated, but they cleared it faster out of their system than unvaccinated. So there's that additional benefit there. So this is really, really, really interesting. Uh, so that's the Lancet pa paper. The take home message though, is you can see as well that how dangerous the Delta strain is, is that vaccines do not really protect you from being infected you can see this is a very large number of, of vaccinated who are still being infected and that has some important consequences that i will want to tell you in a moment as to basically how do we now protect ourselves the vaccinated community how does the vaccinated community protect itself from from this threat of infection by the delta strain so the other information that I wanted to share with you is from CDC and this is really neat. So the, what CDC did is they actually compared natural, natural immunity post-infection in unvaccinated against subsequent Delta strain infection as compared to, un, as compared to vaccinated people who, might have never been, who were never infected before. So basically we we're trying to compare here and this is what they were trying to compare. How does natural protection compared against vaccination and what they were sh showing 
is that basically unvaccinated who have been previously infected and basically had natural immunity protection, 9% of them got subsequently infected with the Delta strain as compared to when it comes to vaccinated community who was never infected, 5% of them got infected with the Delta strain. So this also shows you basically what, are, what is the apparent prevalence of infection amongst the two different communities in the US. Now this is a little bit of a weird data and the reason why is because I'll tell you right away is because number one, it's very small size. I'm not sure why it's small size. So they only had thousand people, thousand people in, uh, in the unvaccinated sample and 6,000 people or so in the vaccinated sample and based on information on all these people needed hospitalization by the way and all and that was from information from nine states now there's millions of people in the US so I'm not sure why they were able to assemble greater amount of data so that the statistical difference could be greater especially since they were also not comparing apples to apples and uh, the reason why is uh, because uh, the unvaccinated community who were naturally uh, immune apparently well, first of all more of that community was younger and unvaccinated compared to the vaccinated community where most of it comprised of the uh, older uh, ages another difference was that they were assembled from different time points so the vast majority of the data for the unvaccinated was prior to delta infection as compared to the vaccinated community and the last difference and this was really interesting i found is that unvaccinated when they did get infected they got infected much later in comparison to the vaccinated uh, community so vaccinated people in this cdc study when they did get infected with the delta strain they were infected much sooner than the unvaccinated in the study so there so it's not an exact comparison it would have been great to have uh, more closely much uh, uh, groups but basically the take-home message here is that approximately there was that twofold difference uh, between how likely you are to be infected by the delta strain if you're vaccinated versus uh, unvaccinated and have natural immunity protection now this is in contrast to the study from the israel that i talked about in video 12 where in their study they compared approximate like several hundred thousand people so way 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 bigger study which means way more statistically accurate and this was based on um, just simply based on the Israeli population remember that Israel was uh, one of the leading countries that uh, was uh, when the vaccination started and in fact they were also the, the leading country that used boosters and uh, and in their study natural infection apparently provided you much greater protection than vaccination so now these are these are now contrasting results so we'll need to see more data in the future to see what is now fully accurate which one is the real winner so the battle the battle rages on in this regard okay uh, but you can see the differences so this is uh some of the interesting information and really the most important information here is that vaccinated community can still get easily infected and they can easily spread the infection and also oh, another information i can mention you that came out of lancet paper is that vaccinated community that was uh, infected in households those who were more likely to get infected while vaccinated is because they were vaccinated later in time then they're less likely to be infected who are vaccinated meaning the older your vaccination record the more likely you are to get infected basically meaning your vaccination protection from being infected wanes over time and this was quite rapid we we're talking about those who are more likely to be infected were were vaccinated three months prior versus those who were more protected were vaccinated only two months prior so the vaccine protection wanes quite rapidly actually there was another paper that showed that based also on uk tracing uh program and this was actually uh, i think looking at fifty thousand people so very big study again 
and it showed that that result for both the AstraZeneca vaccine and the mRNA vaccine that yes if you are vaccinated immediately after vaccination you are less likely to be infecting others than unvaccinated person but that protection wanes quite rapidly and within three to four months the effect of AstraZeneca pretty much wore, wore off and they were just as likely to be infecting people as unvaccinated. What this means is that we actually have inappropriate mandates which segregates the population between vaccinated versus unvaccinated. The reason why I say it's inappropriate is because it does not protect the most vulnerable groups from, uh, from infection. The reason why is because we have to be now aware of the fact that once you're vaccinated you still can be easily infected and spread that infection and that means we need to be able to take that into account to protect the most vulnerable groups of our population which are the elderly who are for the most part, all of them are vaccinated, but nevertheless, we already can tell from the data that's coming out that once again, they are the most vulnerable group in the vaccinated community. So for all the vaccinated people, elderly, once again, are most likely to be infected, most likely, to, no, I shouldn't say most likely to be infected, most likely to experience negative outcomes because of infection. So more likely to end up in a hospital and die from infection and we need to be able to protect these people and we've been doing that fairly well before and we did that with testing and we did that because we we're checking who coming in contact with the most vulnerable groups is infected versus not and we should be adopting that system once again because right now we're potentially placing that community at risk if we're just thinking that vaccination status is enough to protect someone from uh, infection it's not this data clearly even the one i'm telling you today which shows you that how well vaccines can give you a protection nevertheless this all of this data clearly points to the fact that post post vaccination you can still be a risk to your community and i think airlines had the smartest system before even vaccination is that we're basically ensuring that everyone who got on board of a plane had to have a negative result uh, official result within three days uh, prior to getting on a plane and it kind of makes sense because you know a plane is like a basically a flying metal box and if someone is infected and goes on in there the likelihood of them infecting others is going to be quite high because there's no circulation of air you're in long proximity of each other with one another and why three days is because Remember, you don't develop uh, symptoms right away once you get infected and, uh, and virus, once you get infected with the virus, it has to grow inside of you before you can actually be infectious to others and, and your symptoms don't even show up till usually fifth day and the first few days you're not infectious to others and that's why airlines picked three days and it was a very effective system uh, and that system should not be abandoned at all. And the reason why is because, again, vaccination does not stop infection and we need to be aware of that and, uh, and take that into account. This is a smart system, we should go back to this uh, system uh, in order to protect our population that is at highest risk, which once again was going to be the elderly and immunocompromised. So that's all I wanted to share with you in this particular video. Uh, great information, great science data coming out comparing natural immunity versus vaccination and what is strain doing to one group of people versus the other. So take care for now and uh, see you till next video when more science data emerges and uh, if you like the video give us a like, leave a comment, share, <laughs> you know you know how YouTube likes it and so do we. <laughs> Bye for now.